So I specifically um, want to welcome my um, motley crew of motorbike group, all old scattered all over. I mean, there's more of us here tonight. It's aptly called the men of no show because we can't get a biking group together once a month. But uh, it's good to see you guys, Andre and the guys. Thank you, Hat, all of you. And also some of my family members are here, which I also don't even ever see. It's like, hey, how's it going? Cool. Had a baby recently. Yeah. So um, I think, and that's how busy we are. But um, I think what, we, what, what I actually wanted to talk to ton about tonight is a lot of people, as Fred said, bring your checkbooks, venture capitalists, I think people watch too much Dragon's Den, is to actually just talk about the business model of a venture capital company. I mean, we, a business just like any of the entrepreneurial businesses we invest in, we as Knife Capital had to really fake it for many years until we still faking it. <laughs> and. Um, and people sort of, you know, think this is massive successful business, but at the end of the day, there's two co-founders that sat somewhere and had a vision and didn't know what we were, the hell we were doing, and here we are, you know. So just, just actually people don't think about that. And the reason why it's so topical for us at the moment, because we are raising a fund and 12J is a tax incentive thing. It's February, so it's just been hectic this week. And, and as, as more and more people were doing due diligence on us, asking, in, in, in my mind, very stupid questions about like how do you do and I was like geez actually people don't know this stuff you know so I hopefully share some wisdom on that on that tonight but um, anyway before I before I get there just talking a little bit about me and what what we are so I think Knife Capital is a, is a, is a venture capital fund for um, if people want to know why it's called Knife Capital it's better that question is better answered over a glass of wine because it was the name was thought up over lots of life from stone it involved a restaurant called knife restaurant and um, in century city and and the financial mail would put pressure on us to come up with a name for our company that they wanted, wanted to write about so we we had a close of business deadline and we had too much booze and knife capital <laughs> so um you know that's that's a good as good a story as it's going to get but um what 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 it is all about for us, and it's a sort of post rationalized you can see there's like K&F knife stuff in there. Years later, we thought, well, maybe we should actually weave the story a bit better than that in, if, in case a real investor asks us, how did you come up with the name? Um, but we, we, we passionately believe that any high growth business needs those three things to succeed. Firstly, knowledge. Um, the craftsmen need to be good at their craft. And whether it's an AI algorithm or whether it's baking muffins, it has to be good muffins. So I think the first thing to be said, which is maybe a bit controversial, standing in the Silicon Cape, is the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of our entrepreneurs are awesome, 80% are not. They're average, they don't deserve to get funding, they're going to fail, and they shouldn't be entrepreneurs. So I think we are talking about the high growth, 20%, cream of the crop, people are going to make it, going to disrupt, not going to tweet about the fact that they're going to disrupt some stuff at some stage of their life in the future, when they get executing, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I think one, one has to be awesome. You know, you have to be an amazing person, good at your craft. We as venture capitalists need to be good at our craft, which is helping those entrepreneurs to scale. Intellectual property protection, market access, all those type of things. And how we do it is through networks, because we don't know how to do it. We know some people who know how to do it, and we need to connect the entrepreneurs with those people so that they can scale and help them with market access, network scale, all that kind of stuff. So networks and knowledge are more important than the funding. So in the distant third place is funding. And the only reason why any entrepreneur should not bootstrap and not get people like us in, on their boards and disrupting their lives and, 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 and taking some negative control and all those kind of stuff is basically to, because the window of opportunity for that particular business is now. If the, if the why now slide is strong, like you have to do it now, then you need maybe a little bit of funding to accelerate that. Because if you, you can bootstrap for five years and get to point B, but in the meantime, the competition and the whole industry has moved to point C. So if you can fast track that, that's the only reason why you should have money, not because you're running out of cash flow, et cetera, et cetera. It's always plans one can make. Knowledge networks funding, that's what it's all about. We also run an accelerator um, called Grindstone, where we take, I, I see there's some of our acceleration companies in here, so welcome guys. It's nice to, to see the cohort. So every year we take 10 companies. We've this year got just yesterday announced, or yeah, it was the day before yesterday that we've got 
um, money from the SASME fund to, to accelerate Grindstone towards 20 companies a month, uh, a month, geez, a year. Um, I'll be even more tired. Um, 10 in Joburg, 10 in Cape Town, and basically give them knowledge networks funding to scale. I'm not really going to go in detail into our current portfolio in South Africa. We've also got, we've branched out towards London because we figured out that a lot of South Africans are, especially after, well, budget speech wasn't so bad, but, you know, people are in anticipation of VAT increases and so forth. They don't want to take the political risk, but they're quite happy to take the entrepreneurial risk. So people out there know that our entrepreneurs are amazing. As long as the tax event doesn't happen here, it happens in Amsterdam, Mauritius, Luxembourg, Delaware, all that kind of stuff, they're quite happy to back you guys as entrepreneurs. So we figured that out and branched out to London with some family offices and investing back into South Africa and to broader Africa. But anyway, we've got everything in our portfolio from ticketing. Glad to know that you bought your tickets on, on Quicket, so thank you um, for the margin. Um, Data Profit is an artificial intelligence business that basically do AI for autonomous manufacturing. They've got amazing clients, Daimler, they a world beating technology just down the road here. It's definitely a company to watch and there's some interesting things happening. We've got edtech businesses. In fact, one of the businesses that, we, that, that Brett and them invested in before us is Snaplify. There's always a, one or two little professional jealousy between venture capitalists to say, shit, you know, we should really have that portfolio company in our, in our, in our business. And luckily we were invited into the, to the second round funding. A bit more expensive than when Brett and them got in there, but you know, de-risk, so we're good. And um, yeah, we've got Pura, which is, which is innovation, a bit different, but under the sugar tax, we've got some um, software as a service businesses involved in um, warehouse management software. Yeah, so we have lots of fun, and lastly, some health tech. So what venture capital really is, people don't really think about, what, what is it? You know, I get some money, and, and then what? Well, why should I give you 20% of my business? Well, you're not giving me anything. I'm giving you 20 million rand for that 20% of your business. So it's a, it's a bit of an exchange of things. And what you exchange with each other is basically the VC provides equity funding, as I said, skills, experience, networks, and take that risk with you. you know, a, good, a good venture capitalist should actually almost eventually be like another co-founder, passionate about the business, bringing not just the check, but bringing the clients and, and seeing different opportunities for the business to the table in exchange for shareholding and, and autonomy. You can't just now make decisions without some frameworks and yes, there's some controls and those things, but, but they all come from a place of sensibility and you gain a growth partner. So you're not on your own anymore. And that's sort of what it's all about. I think the, the last thing I just want to say on this, on this topic is entrepreneurship doesn't happen, happen in a vacuum. So you need the heavy chefs out there, you need government to do their thing, you need the silicon capes, you need the incubators, accelerators, the banks, the service providers, the lawyers. It, it, it really is a team effort of all of these things clicking together. The problem in South Africa is that each of these blocks are running in a silo. So, so you know, if I could have a, a mission in life is to find the magic glue that binds all of those blocks into one block together. But Maybe one day when I launch my political career, I'll do that. Okay, so back to the business model of venture capital. So as a business, how does a venture capital company work? Well, if, if the entrepreneurs think it's hard to pitch for business, you can at least have a product or a vision or a, or a startup or something that you can show. You can say, listen, I've got this AI business, I've written this algorithm, I've got maybe a POC, I've got a minimum viable product, and I want to use the money to point two marketing people, scale it into Africa, and then eventually, you know, we're going to be a unicorn and we're going to sell it to Google, and that's the plan. As a venture capitalist, your pitch to other very sophisticated investors are like, we're a team of two or three, um, we want 100 million rand, so you're not, you, you can't, you, you need a lot of money, and what we're going to do with that money is we're going to find entrepreneurs that's more or less going to look like this in Africa that's going to disrupt stuff. We don't quite know what, but like innovative stuff. And, um, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine years later, we're going to hopefully give you your money back. And once we've given you your money back, then you know, hopefully we're also going to make some money. So where do you sign? 
So it is actually that difficult. So the, the business model of a venture capital business is like this. So you have investors. It should be institutional investors, but South Africa, there is actually no real venture capital industry. It's all really built on a super angel industry. And if it wasn't for the Mark Shuttleworths and the Ruperts and the Hassa Platners and the Patrice Matepes and the Michael Jordans and, you know, they, they actually, I don't know what, where we would have been. You know, thank goodness for 12J. So now, you know, in, angel investors can actually get a tax break to get in. So there's like broaden that angel base. But we've got a hell of an angel investor space, a hell of a super angel investor space. We've got a zero venture capital industry, which means in other countries, Israel, US, UK, wherever there's a VC industry, there's actually pension funds and endowment funds and alternative asset managers and life companies and, and everyone that invest in these things. So as an entrepreneur, if you think you've pitched to 50 investors that said no to you, I promise you, there is not one institution that you guys can ask me, have you pitched to and not to take a swing at Old Mutual or all the four banks or every single pension fund or every single, there's not one company you can mention. It's like, have you asked them for money? And they said, not a chance. It's just, we don't know. I mean, in fact, one, one asset manager and Brett was in that meeting actually, said to us, you know what, during this meeting, I'll, and, and we were asking for a 200 million fund or whatever at the time, during this meeting, I, I lost or made your whole fund on the Bidvest share price, and I didn't have to do anything. I just had to drink coffee, and I don't care. So it was like, you guys are insignificant, because even if you succeed, you know, it doesn't move my needle, which is actually true. It, I mean, you have to accept it. So, so at the end of the day, we had to come up with a different value proposition, which I think we have. So, so how it works is we have a company. Let's, let's just call it, to, to be a decent VC, you need probably 250 million plus for the mathematics to work out. But let's just, for easy math, make a 200 million rand fund. Generally, the management fees are 2% of the, the management fee. Ours is 2.5%. So um, that means you've got, on a 200 million fund, you've got 5 million rand of revenue a year. And that's it. You know, your rent goes up, your, your salaries escalate of your team, but your management fee stays. 5 million rand a year for the next 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years while you, while you do this because you get 2.5% of the funds under management. And that, you pay salaries, you pay rent, you do due diligences, you travel, you do all that stuff with the finite amount of revenue that you have. And that's, that's all you have. But why do we all do it? In fact, there's portfolio companies that have larger salaries than Andrea and I because generally, if you do the maths, the VC fund can only do so much, right? So um, you do it because what happens is you tell those investors when, when we've given you the 200 million rand back and there's usually a bit of a hurdle but for simplicity, let's say, let's say prime or whatever, but let's just for simplicity's sake say once you get the 200 million back, anything above that, we share 80-20. We give you 80% and we take 20%. So now when you start really going through the cycle of find, make, grow, realize, and I'll go in that to now, when you start realizing these investments and, and really have one or two big hits, you start making some real money. But you're making that real money quite a long, long time from today. And that is the, that's what keeps us going. Um, that's, that's hopefully it's, it's like a little bit of a bit of a drug. Once you've smelt a little bit of called carried interest, then um, you think, well, it's like a four minute mile. You can do it again. And, uh, and, and that's sort of why you do it. So business model of a VC is actually a shit business model. So if any of you guys want to be, if you, I wouldn't fund you if you came to me with a business plan for a VC because it would just like be like, no. Rather be a AI for combining IoT and combining uh, um, you know, all that stuff, then we'll do it. So find, make, grow, realize, that's what we do. So now we've got the money. We've convinced some investors to give us some money. We have our measly salaries. We find our humble offices. We have a side hustle, usually. I mean, you're usually a consultant by night and, and, and do a bit of evaluation on the side or a due diligence for a friend for 50,000 Rand here or 100,000 Rand there. And that's how you kind of keep alive. In fact, it's, it's Knife Capital's 10th birthday this year, so we managed to actually keep alive for 10 years. In a due diligence last year, one of the funders told me, and I was actually quite offended, he said, like, but how your business model is not sustainable. This, your business model is not sustainable. Like, how, how are you guys going to sustain ourselves? Like, listen, dude, from the 1st of July, 2010, 
I've been sustaining myself. So it's been 10, nine years at the time. So sorry, but no. But it's, yeah, it's, I have to agree, it's not a great model. But um, anyway. See, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing well selling VC to, uh, I hope there's no 12J investors that are thinking of investing in our fund in, in this audience. So um, anyway, luckily our portfolio companies have great business models, so we invest in them. So what we do is we have to find amazing companies to invest in. We have to find amazing investors to back us because you definitely don't want average investors to go on this long journey with you because it's, you know, at some point of your life you earn the, the right to actually just deal with awesome people. And we've made that mistake of taking money from the wrong people. We had to buy our own company back out of a situation to, to actually, you know, so once you've exited your own company and bought it back for real money out of your bond, now then you have a story to tell. So um, finding good investments to make, then you have to make them. And what, what making that investment is, and that's kind of the difference between, this is when you start really the 80-20 rule between average venture capitalists and, and, and good ones, this is where it starts to matter. It's like anyone can, you can rock up, put a banner up saying I've got funding. The business plans will start coming in. I mean, you know, we see the same business plans. My, 4DI Capital, Knife Capital, Angel Hub, or Lysani now. You know, all of us entrepreneurs only have so many options in South Africa. So, you know, you have to assume they're talking to all our mates as well, you know. Making the deal means you have to sort of start seeing the terms. You have to be founder friendly. You have to value it at the right valuation. Remember, these are earlier stage businesses, very difficult to value them. You have to do proper due diligence. You have to really look at what is the market sizing, where could this thing go. You have to have a bit of a joke up your sleeve thinking, hang on, through our networks, we know a guy that can take this business into their manufacturing concerns and we're not going to put two and two together for this entrepreneur until we are a 26% shareholder. And that's how this whole, whole game actually works. As you, as you, you invest in businesses where you can actually add knowledge and networks and the funding is just your ticket in because um, that's the secret of, of how this all works. But then the hard work starts. I know Venture Burn and all these things very, very loud at announcing Company X has, has raised the Series A round or Company Y has raised the Series B round. And that's great for those companies. But, you know, that whole find and make exercise is about three to six months. The grow exercise is five to seven years. So that's when you have to be a growth partner and you have to really know how to build businesses. Four, you have to know what, what is the realization strategy. And in our game, it is about exits or it is about selling those businesses on it is about like, like pitching it up for a trade sale to a strategic partner. If it's an insure tech business, you want to kind of get close to discovery because you want kind of them to start getting an interest and think this could go well with our um, channels and then buying that business for a premium. Or you sell it back to management. What you don't do in South Africa is list it on the JSE within three years like most entrepreneurs answer when you ask them what is your exit strategy. It just doesn't happen. When last is a entrepreneurial business list within three years. So that's the find, make, grow, realize cycle. Now luckily for South Africa, our entrepreneurs are actually doing quite well. In fact, you know, we are living in a bit of a bubble when it comes to our world because our businesses are growing minimum 50, 60, 70 percent year on year, some of them 150 percent. It's off a low base, sure, but you know, when people are saying the economy is slowing down, the there's jobs are being shared, this type of stuff. In my life, it's just not true. You know, I'm, I'm inspired every day by the business plans I see. In fact, yesterday there was an entrepreneur that it was a video conference and they pitched this business and I could kind of scan across the, make eye contact with my partners and I, I just know this business is going to be a success. I haven't even done the due diligence yet, but I've, I, I know. So, um, you know, and it's just like so exciting. So, and we've got many, many success stories. These are some of the businesses that have raised capital of in the last sort of few years. And I mean, there's many slides we can put on these things, but our entrepreneurs are raising capital. They are exiting, you know, in the past it was just lonely old Mark Shuttleworth. He did sell his business when he was about 23 for $575 million and then set up a venture capital fund, which, which, um, which is where my journey started. So, so, we partnered with him and that was the first portfolio we ran. But there's amazing exits to Garmin, 
to Visa. I mean, that was a $110 million exit. WPP buys most advertising agencies eventually. I'm sure they'll buy Heavy Chef at some stage because it's a, sort of in the value chain, isn't it? Um, you know, MyGate, IoT.next. You know, the, this, the cycle is working. So while it is a very difficult business model, if we were to flush the venture capitalists with more money that we can deploy more responsibly behind entrepreneurship, we would have a much more robust entrepreneurial ecosystem that could thrive. As Knife Capital, yeah, it's been a long journey, but we've been successful in a way. So our sort of, we've had some other exits, we've also had some failures, but you know, our, our first exit was a business called C-Sense, Pretoria-based predictive analytics business, General Electric. They first became a client, white labeling the product and then they realized geez we can't let this company at the bottom end of africa go down because our clients like what this technology is and all that let's just make a offer and it was a eye-watering offer and we, we exited that there's a great book that's not as great as the heavy chef like guide to startups must be said <laughs> but um, that hannes van rensburg um, uh, wrote about the fundamo journey cash in cash out if you're interested in fintech in africa but startup, Durbanville based, um, it was involved in fintech in Africa and it exited to Visa for $110 million. Now, if you do the, the mathematics here, so we had a 27% stake of the $110 million exit. Our whole fund was 150 million rand. So we gave Mark his fund back and we still had six other companies to exit, which was Audit Talk, a um, business that's involved in online food ordering technology, which we sold, it was the last business we sold, um, and it was uh, to, to Uber. They used the point of sale integration to that business. We had an amazing business, and I'm still on the board there, they just don't want to let me go, um, called Flightscope, that we, uh, we exited back to management, and then Ikubu to Garmin. So, hopefully gave you guys a bit of an insight on how venture capital works. It is actually a very exciting business model if it works. If it doesn't work, you've wasted 10 years of your life. Thank you.